What's up everyone, I'm Aaron Schatz, Editor-in-Chief of ASE Publishing, and welcome to another ASE Labs video review. Today we'll be reviewing the Enerplex Kicker 4 and the Jumper 4400 mAh battery backup unit for USB solar charging kit. It's a kit because basically you buy two of these products and it becomes one really great system. This is review ID 41337. 41337. Yeah, it sounds like a star date now, doesn't it? Uh, you can check out this and all our other reviews by going to www.aslabs.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you're viewing right now. Subscribe to our RSS feeds and be sure to post on our forums and stuff. So let's get into this review. Let's start with the Kicker 4. The Kicker 4 is the solar panel array, and as you can see, it has four solar panels. One, two, three, four. This fifth panel here controls the power unit that all these four feed into and on the back you see that it has the USB cable and strangely enough the USB plug is really hard to <laughs> to get out once it's in there so plugging in no problem getting out a little more difficult the weird thing about this is when you actually have, let's say this is the sun sun's over here beating down light now you have this all sprawled out and as you can see the USB is on the underside of this. That's kind of strange right there. I would think that the USB port should be on this side right here and on the top facing out. Also on the back you can see that the USB port is facing this way so when you flip it around it's actually facing this way instead of that way. Also kind of strange but you know little little quirks and stuff so I think they I think the purpose is that you can actually use this with less than four panels exposed to the sun and that's also fine I just don't understand why this isn't on the other side so that's just a weird design decision I don't know why it was done that way it was just done that way a little bit more about the kicker 4 you can see it's very flexible so you can fold this up tie it down and then actually take it with you but not only that the individual panels themselves are flexible, which is very important when you're dealing with either a camping trip or you just want to throw this in a backpack or something. So as you can see, the panels are also very flexible themselves. Don't try doing this with any other type of solar panels that are very rigid. You'll just crack them. They're like glass. So for rugged abil for <laughs> durability and ruggedness, great, great product. And you know when you're camping and stuff and you just want to just lug something like this around, it's really, really useful. You don't have to treat them like glass and really treat them with a lot of care. You can just like, you know, throw them around, no big deal. The USB cable that comes with the Kicker 4 is USB-A to three types of charging connections. So you have mini, micro, and the older iPhone connection. The cable really just isn't long enough. And no big deal, you can always just get another cable that's longer. But the, the actual cord itself is pretty interesting, so you can use this to charge, you know, three types of connections. Alright, let's check out the jumper. The jumper is a basic USB battery pack for charging USB devices. As you can see, it takes uh, an input of micro USB on this side right here. So if I have a micro USB cable that has power, I'll just plug this thing right in. And you can see that the LED indicators indicate that it's charging. So obviously 100%, 75, 50, and basically less than 25%. So very, very obvious what they are. There's four of them. Just do the math. No big deal at all. There's some actual other things about the jumper that's pretty, pretty interesting. So you have the single on-off button on this side. And as you can see, to actually get power from the device to charge something else, you plug cable into here and let's just take my phone for instance plug that into here and you can see that it's not charging yet you actually have to turn this on to actually start charging so to turn it on for charging you just hold down the power button and see the screen turned on it's charging so when you hold the power button down, it'll do a little LED display that it's either turning on or off. So I'll turn it on again just to show you. Pay attention to the little LEDs. Right? Now you can see that it's charging and that uh, it's only got a little juice left in here for it to charge. But it's charging my phone. 
So I'm going to turn that off. When I unplug this, if this doesn't detect that power is coming out of it, it will actually turn itself off. And that's pretty good to save power. Let me show you that it can charge my Nexus 7 as well. Plug that into here. Alright, I'm going to turn this thing on. There you go. I'll show you the larger charging. See right up the top. Charging. So this can charge a Nexus 7 as well. I doubt it can charge like a iPad or something that has those ridiculous amperage requirements, but it will charge most devices without a problem. Another interesting feature of the jumper is the flashlight on it. Now, I know I've said this in the past that, you know, it's a really handy thing to have, and it really is a handy thing to have. Think about it. All right, I leave this somewhere near my desk, and I have no other flashlight near my desk, and the power goes out, and it's at night. So now what do I do? I can just say, oh, oh wait, I have a flashlight right here, and I just touch the power button, turn it on, and you get a nice little flashlight right there. It's a single LED. It's not going to provide that much light, but think about it. If you have no light versus this, you're going to be pretty happy that you have at least this to find your way around the darkness. So obviously, the best thing to do in this situation when you have a power outage is to use this to charge this and then pass through to another device that you want to charge. And let's say you want to use that device uh, and you still have sunlight out. Well, if you have this plugged in, you'll just collect all the solar power you want for later. So let's say your device dies during the night, you have this charge at least to actually recharge your other device until the sun comes back out. So the fact that this can do pass through is very, very important in something like a disaster situation when you don't want to keep on plugging and replugging devices in and you actually want to use your device in the sun. So this allows you to do it. Pretty much any battery pack will do it, but this is made by the same company, and this is a really, really good product. So this is, you know, a pretty good product as well. Fairly expensive, but very good for what it does. Not every one of these products does pass through, and that's really important. But let's, let's actually go outside and show you how they both work. So we're outside in a pre-spring day in New Jersey. It is in the 50s right now in early March. You can see that I have the Enterplex kicker in the full sunlight right now. It's not really at a great angle because it's pretty low in the sky right now. But I don't know if you can see this, but you can see that it's charging right now. The actual blue light is flashing. And let me just show you a little weird part about this. You see how the USB port is facing kind of the wrong way, but I'll, I think I showed you that earlier, but if not, I'll, I'll recap that later inside. But so, I have my Droid 4 here, and you can see that the jumper is charging. So I'm going to take the USB cord and plug that in. Whoa. <laughs> and that is one of the problems that I wanted to cover. Stay there. So you can see that the my Droid 4 is charging. Let's turn that back on. So you can see that the Droid 4 up there is charging as well. So it's using it as a pass-through. Very, very important when dealing with solar technology. So the jumper doesn't provide enough power in pass-through mode for my Nexus 7, but as you can see, it is charging right now. See? Charging up. I don't know if you can actually see this in the sun. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit just to show you here we go see nice and charging so with the panel directly on this it's actually available to charge my Nexus 7 Let's see if it could focus come on there you go so it could charge the Nexus 7 directly but not using the jumper as a pass-through but since you're charging the jumper you can actually just unplug the jumper and then charge the Nexus 7 after so it still works the way it's intended but you know what? Solar technology, great when you have no power available. So that was a, an example of how the system actually works. And I call it a system because really this without a battery backup, it, you're, you're losing something from you know, having the solar, the solar charging capability because you're missing out on, on storing that energy when you're not using this. So think about if you're camping and you just want to you know, charge your devices up. Well, you'd actually have to lay this out in the sun the entire time, have your device 
on this and, and really not be able to use it. So with this, you can actually use your device and then charge it up later when there's less sun or no, no sun at all. So that's why I call this a system. The Enerplex Kicker 4 retails for about $130 and it may seem expensive, but it's not. If you compare this to like competing products from Goal Zero and stuff, it's, it's very competitively priced. And plus, unlike all those other competitors, you don't have panels that can fold up or flex. And the flexibility is very important. When you're either in a disaster situation or if you're just camping, you know, the ability to just, you know, just throw this around and beat the crap out of it and stuff is, is really something. So the durability of this, uh, like, lends itself to those disaster situations, and it's really important. The jumper is about $70 at retail right now, and, and that is really expensive for what this does. You can buy competing products for like half the price, and even sometimes a little less. Granted, they're not going to be the quality that this is, but you really have to you really have to tell yourself, okay, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to buy something that's really good in build quality as opposed to really something that's cheaper in build quality. And do you want to be stuck in a situation when you're either in a disaster to have something that doesn't work? Like, for instance, a product that I reviewed in the past basically died after a couple of years of just storage. So something like this probably won't die after two years. So that's the situation that you might be in. Do you want to buy cheap or do you want to buy quality that will work later down the road? You know, I've reviewed that little solar panel thing in the past that had a, you know, a little battery in it that actually can charge up your device in a pinch so you can make a call for an emergency purposes. But that little device in any solar panel that's this size doesn't have the surface area to charge your device. This, look at the surface area of this. You have these four panels and they're very big. This will charge your devices up. Those little panels will basically keep your device charged for a longer period of time, but eventually it just will run out of juice. This will actually keep your devices charged and charge them up from even while using it. So that's really, really important. The surface area of this is what you're looking for. Don't just say like, oh, I have a, I have a solar panel, it'll charge my device. Yeah, maybe it'll charge you while it's off and you can't use it. What good is that when you're in a disaster? I live in the Northeast and during Hurricane Sandy, my house was out of power for about a week. My parents were out of power for about 10 days. And while we had a gas generator, it's great when you have a generator that you can charge everything up, but you want to know what the problem with the gas generator is, it takes gas. And in Jersey, we had a huge problem with supply of gas. There were, you know, three and four hour lines just to get gas. And it was just an absolute mess. If I had this during the storm, I'd actually have been able to keep my devices charged up without worrying about having to, you know, the portable generator and stuff. But, you know what, don't get me wrong, I want to have the generator and this at the same time because having lights in the house is better than having candles in the house. So yeah, but still, you know, in a disaster situation, this is the kind of product that you leave in a closet you don't remember about until you actually need it. And something with this quality is something I would trust. Me, I would trust this. I would put this in my closet and wait till there's a disaster and take this out and start using it. You know, you have to really decide if you want to spend the money on, you know, this level of product. I personally would. I went through Hurricane Sandy. I know a lot of people went through Hurricane Sandy. And I know even I wasn't like one of the people that were affected the most. Seven days without power, ten days without power, not that big of a deal. There were people without power for months. That's crazy. And of course, you know, everybody around them started getting power so they could plug in everywhere. But you know what? Sometimes you're in a disaster and you want something that you know will work. This will work. So it's up to you to really decide if you want to buy something that's, you know, it is expensive. It's $130, $70. So you're looking at a $200 cost for everything. But you know what? For something you leave in the closet and you only use it for emergencies, that's the time when you're going to say to yourself like, oh, you know what? I'm really happy I bought this because now I don't have to worry about where I'm going to charge my phone or other mobile devices. I pretty much take it you know that I'm going to recommend this product. This one, on the other hand, you may just be able to find something cheaper and works just as well. But you know what? The kicker, the kicker, this, the solar panels, they're really good product. $130, flexible panels, very rugged, works great. I recommend it. You know, if you never lose power, you don't even have to worry about this. But if you go camping and stuff, also a great investment. For ASC Labs and ASC Publishing, I'm Aaron Schatz, and thank you for watching. You could check out this and all our other reviews by going to www.aslabs.com. 
Just remember, you're watching our YouTube video right now, so you should really click that subscribe button. And you know what? Send in some comments, post in the forum, send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. And remember, I said there was going to be more content this year, and this is just the start. We have many more products to review. So let me know what you want us to review, and we'll try to get it in for review. So thank you very much for watching.